Jenny and Tyler Summers create thought-provoking songs of love and faith with gripping harmonies. And we're just so glad to have them with us here on Real Life. Jenny and Tyler, welcome. Thanks hey. for having us. Yeah. We just love your music and as you're playing, everybody is just into it. And we've got our coffee cups and we're sitting in the coffee house and we're enjoying life and faith and music. Mm. Tell me where it all began. Where did your walk with Christ begin? Yeah, do you want to go? Or you want oh, me to? sure. Well, um, I grew up in a military family, so I'm an Air Force kid. Nice. And uh, my parents became uh, believers when they were as adults. So we would just kind of go to whatever church felt good to them, whatever felt comfortable. They didn't have, you know, an attachment to a denomination or anything. Um, and it was really in watching my parents, like, come to know the Lord that my siblings and I, uh, that they ministered to us and led, led us to Christ. And um, when I was 15 was when it became something that was a lot more real to me. And I, um, we were moving from Delaware to Mississippi, which is a really major culture shock. Yeah. If you've, you know, the deep South is, yeah. is a different world. Um, and uh, I just remember uh, we were gonna move down there and I was really nervous. I'd never been there, I was 15 years old. And um, I just felt for the first time like, I could have an actual relationship with Christ. Like it became a, a real thing. I remember praying and, mm -hmm. and uh, feeling like for the first time there was someone on the other end of my prayer. Wow. Um, and that really led to you know, a deeper relationship, which then also led to more writing and, and music because most of the, the music and the songs come from um, the questions I have within that relationship. Um, and. Tyler has a similar story in the, in the I sense was 15 same age. Yeah. as well. Yeah. I, I was a pretty terrible kid. I used to try to make my mom cry, and I felt like I'd won if I had done that. Um, and I, I was kind of like, I, you were talking about that person who is uh, a mean cuss or something. Yeah, a mean old cuss. I, I used to just have this terrible mouth, and I, I was uh, really like middle school through freshman year of high school was kind of just doing what whatever the rest of my friends were doing um trying to like girls and uh substance abuse and uh and things like that and and my mom um she's always been like the the subtle and sometimes not so subtle force yes. uh spiritual force in our family um so <laughs> so I had just gone to Italy with my, um, with my high school choir, and we came back from Italy, and my parents had purchased a beach house, and I was at the beach, and, and a, a friend of mine was supposed to come and, and join me and, and my friends at the beach, and he, he got in a boating accident, and uh, it, was, it, it took his life, and it was uh, it totally uh, took my world apart, and it, it made me question everything that I was living for and just how I was kind of wasting my life away. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just a few weeks later, my mom had signed me up for this camp that I was very opposed to. Uh, but she, she was like, Tyler, I paid the money, you're going. And, <laughs> uh, and it was a young life camp. And I heard the gospel of Jesus in a, a way that I had never heard it before. Um, it's the way that Young Life does it is, is pretty amazing. They, they take you through creation, sin, mm -hmm. you, G, the cross, resurrection, and then like, what does this mean for you? And, and so it was like, oh my goodness, I want that. I want that life. I want, like Jesus says, I've come, they, they may have life and have it in abundance. Mm -hmm. That's what attracted me to Jesus. Um, yeah, wow. so I was 15 when that happened I mean, as well. That that tells a lot because as I listen to your music, it's not shallow and it's not cute cliches and little rhymy, you know, tunes. It doesn't, you know, we're going to make these cute words fit. They're like, they're, they're meaty words with a message. Where does that come from? How do you, how do you get that deep? Man, thanks for saying that. First of all, that's, that's really, really nice. That's sweet, um, for sure. I, how do we get that deep? I, I, I don't know. I think I'm someone who, we were talking the other day about um, like what 
punctuation mark would you be if you were? <laughs> and I, we both unanimously agreed that I would be a question mark. And so I think like maybe that oh, says a little yes. something about that. I yeah. think that I'm just, I always have questions and there aren't easy answers. Uh -huh. um, and so it's, I don't want to shy away from those questions, I guess. Um, we are, um, our parents in the past have said things like, oh, you need to wrap up the song in a bow. You know, like, yeah. I, I like that, but I, I feel sad now, or I feel now, you know, I don't feel awesome after listening to that song. And um, sometimes I think we can wrap the songs up in a bow, but sometimes it just doesn't, you just can't Well, sometimes, can't do that. sometimes we're, uh, we're actually commanded to enter into grief. And mm -hmm. I'm, a, uh, I'm a seven on the Enneagram scale yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I, I generally avoid pain. Yeah. And whereas she, Jenny's a four, and so she kind of likes to be sad. <laughs> uh, like, and a lot of songs come out of that yeah. place. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's, uh, we bo I mean, both of us, we process life through songwriting and life is, is hard. Mm -hmm. God is good, mm -hmm. but life is hard. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we try to, to capture both of those ideas in most of what we write, I would say. Yeah. Can you take me behind the scenes? There's a song that needs to be sung and words that need to be written. What does that look like with Jenny and Tyler? How, do you, how does the concept of a song come together? Who writes it? Who plays the melody? Who writes the words? Is it coming from scripture? Give us yeah. the inside scoop. <laughs> well, we actually, we write separately most of the time, yeah, which might be surprising. Cool. Um, but for me, um, we have, we have three little girls at home. Mm -hmm. And so in order for me to really write, I go, Tyler lets me go to coffee shops and I sit and, and write and most of my songs are actually written there. Mm -hmm. And I write a lot about motherhood and um, like the awesome parts of that, but also the loneliness that comes with that when you have little kids and yeah. um, a lot about relationships. And then um, generally I'll bring my songs back and I don't play guitar very well, so I, I bring them to Tyler, and Tyler will play and help me make them better. Um, and usually we will finish songs together. Uh -huh. um, and generally it's kind of whoever was the primary writer is the one who sings the melody, but that doesn't always happen. There are um, exceptions to mm -hmm. the rule, yeah, for sure. And your writing process is pretty different from mine. For, for me, it's... Um, I think it's part of the sevenness of, of like avoiding pain. I'll have a project that's that's immediate that mm -hmm. I should do, but I'm like, I just want to not do that right now, <laughs> and so I'll procrastinate and write might a song. Might be a seven too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, college projects were like right to the last minute uh, for Amen. me. Amen. <laughs> oh why do it early and be prepared? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so, so for me, it's like a melody will come in the middle of the night, and I'll I'll voice memo it and I'll go back to it at a later date uh, when actually part of our process over the past year, uh, two years has been, we, we've had these patrons supporting us mm -hmm. and we are accountable to them because we've said, if you support us for whatever amount of money per month, most of the people are a dollar a month, but um, we will write two songs for you. And those songs might not make it to an album, but it keeps us writing oh, and it, it kind of, so it is, yeah. it is so good. Yeah. It keeps the river flowing mm -hmm. sort of in a forced way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So how important is it for, sure. for husbands and wives to work together? And is it your secret sauce? Oh, we honestly, for us, we, we've had to establish really clear boundaries with yeah. work because if we don't, when, when we go out on a date, it can be oh. so easily mm -hmm. like, Hey, what do you think about this idea work-wise? Uh, or and, and it's tricky because it's like our work is also ministry, right. and so it's like it gets it gets fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we uh, we just say like, this is personal, like this is marriage time. When mm -hmm. and I've wanted to go on vacations with Jenny and like do a couple shows, and that way you can write it off on taxes and yeah. stuff. And she's like, <laughs> no, no, no business, oh, no, no. Min like no. I mean, not no ministry, but no yeah. like Jenny and Tyler music business ministry stuff yeah. on this Not vacation. The band, yeah. But the summers, the family. Yeah. Like we try to really 
keep Draw that. Boundaries. Yeah, it's been yeah. so good to keep yeah. those boundaries. Yeah. yeah, that is good. So mm -hmm. your music is, I would say, anointed. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend who was going through a tough time and really listened and tuned into your song, Fear mm -hmm. Thou Not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that a lot, that your music actually helps people in life through situations? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, that is like one of the highest uh, honors so we can, I, I guess we can enter into. Um, and we've heard from a few people, a few different people, some pretty incredible stories of like, like this one girl was, uh, was doing ministry uh, in India and yeah. she had discovered that this place where she was working was very corrupt. Mm -hmm. And some of the people were trying to literally kill her and she was running away and and she um she wow. locked herself in a bathroom mm -hmm. and she was about to to uh end her life mm -hmm. and like a song of ours popped up on her phone and she was wow. like i mean we haven't heard a whole lot of stories like that but mm -hmm. um but we have had the privilege of hearing a few and it's like mm -hmm. wow this is amazing mm -hmm. um how and, and it's like it's God doing that. It's not mm -hmm. like we're just in our bedroom writing a song or at yeah. a coffee shop writing a song. Yeah. It's it's the spirit. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit. It right. makes those powerful. Can we talk about one of the cutest, most adorable songs ever, mm -hmm. Jenny? The One-Eyed Cat. Yeah. I mean, a one-eyed cat just doesn't sound super. It just sounds <laughs> no. funny. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, we have this song called One-Eyed Cat that was <laughs> inspired by my cat, Stuart. Um, who I loved very dearly. And in college, I had this cat. Tyler's very, very allergic to cats. Um, and like I remember <laughs> specifically the moment when I realized it was going to be a problem. He was at my house, and somehow his eye swelled completely yes. shut. And I remember thinking, mm -hmm. well, I guess I'm going to have to choose between Stuart and Tyler. Like, maybe this isn't going to work out. <laughs> and. Um, Stuart ended up, you know, going to live with my with my parents, and we got married. And um, we don't have any cats or anything, but uh, yeah, that that song was inspired by Stuart. Just the idea of um, the things that you give up um, to be with the person that you love, but even more so the things that you you really gain yes. from that relationship. And yeah. having given up Stuart was hard for a minute, but it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't that hard. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Jenny and Tyler, tell me what's next with your music. Well, I feel like it's hard to know what's next with music completely, um, but we are, we're having another baby this, this summer. So that's a big deal. That's a big yeah. deal, and that will affect everything else. So we'll be taking a pretty good break um, from like, the, for the second half of the year. So just tell yeah. us so everybody knows mm -hmm. when you have this baby, how old will the kids be? We will have a... <laughs> this is no joke. We will have a no six-year-old, four-year-old, two-year-old, and this new one all at the same time. <laughs> Jesus! Yeah, gonna yeah, need yeah we, need, we definitely need, be need prayer for um, sure. But, I mean, we have, we've got plans for... We, we yeah. want to do a lullabies yeah. record. We want to oh, do another... Yeah. Yeah. Um, another Christmas project, hymns record. Uh, we just did this original thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, our patrons are, are uh, helping us with that. And um, so yeah. we've got all these plans. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we, you know, yeah. The plans of the heart belong to man, but yeah. the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, guys, yeah. you know, we live in a world, a fallen world. People are hurting. People are broken. They, they need a word from God. They need help. What, what is on your heart? to tell people. Yeah, I, I was just um, thinking about this and and one word popped up okay. and it's probably something that you guys speak of very often. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just the word loved. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, like I said, it's nothing new, but um, when we understand the, I mean, it, it's a, it's a prayer in the scriptures. Paul says, um, I'm praying for you guys to grasp mm -hmm. the height, the depth, yeah. the breadth, the width of, mm -hmm. of this love of God. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just this love that we don't, like there's that, uh, the, over the, the overwhelming, the reckless Never love of God. Ending. Yeah, reckless like it's, it's a love that we don't see. Yes. We, we, we get a little taste of. 
Um, and we see it because we have, we've been crucified with Christ. We no longer live. He lives in, in us, in those, those who trust him. So we get a taste of it in, uh, by participating with the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. but, but it's still just a taste. And, and to, I think to, for, for someone to grasp that he doesn't want anyone to perish. You know, he doesn't want anyone to die. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Um, he wants everyone to know him. Um, and he's provided a way through Jesus for that. Uh, <laughs> so that's like, that's, that's the message. It's the same message, um, but it's, it's a message that I think I need to hear because yeah. sometimes I, I act like I'm not really loved mm -hmm. by God. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's, loved. that's it. Loved. 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 Mm -hmm. loved is the word. Well, yep. we loved having you here today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we love that you're with us every day. And we want you to know how much God loves for you, how much God loves you, the great plans that he has for you. Minds can't even imagine or think or even begin to understand the great plans that God has for your life. Thank you so much, Jenny and Tyler. You're just the coolest, cutest, <laughs> anointed little couple. And we're excited that we're gonna be on the front row of watching your life and ministry. Thank you so much.